So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to set up DKIM with Office 365. Now the reason that you should set up DKIM is it's going to help prevent spoofing from sending messages that look like they're coming from your Office 365 domain. Now the way it does this is it basically DKIM adds a digital signature to email messages in the header. Now what you do is you authorize your domain to associate or sign um, to an email message with um, authentication, right? Each email system that receives the email from your domain can then use that digital signature to help determine if the incoming email that it received is legitimate, right? So basically what's happening is, is you're using a private key to encrypt the header in your domain's outgoing email. You publish the public key to your domain's DNS records so that receiving services servers um, can then decode the signature, right? And what this is going to do is it's going to give you basically the external party, the verification that the email message has come from your domain because it can verify that uh, basically using um, this uh, encryption, this DKIM method. Now, the way that we set this up in uh, Office 365 for a custom domain is we can do this a number of ways. Now, one of the ways we can do this is if we go into the admin center, we go into the exchange admin area, and then what we can do is we can look at the protection options here that allow us to uh, set up DKIM. So if we go into protection here, you'll see we have an option here for DKIM. Now I have a number of uh, domains on this tenant. So you'll see that, for example, the ciops365.com already has DKIM enabled. I can disable it. I can do whatever I want. I can rotate um, the keys here. If I have a look at kumoalliance.net, same deal. But this one here, kumoalliance.net.au, currently isn't enabled. So what I want to do is I want to enable that. So again, you would think just clicking uh, this button here would enable but no what needs to happen is you need to go out and basically create two C name records first okay so select a one and select a two uh, are the ways to do that so you'll need to go into basically your uh, DNS hosting change the record set these new records up and then we can come back and enable it but I will suggest to you that an easier way to do this is with PowerShell. Now, one of the advantages that PowerShell gives us is the ability to uh, script a result. Now, if I also am able to script my DNS uh, record change, it's going to make it much easier. So with that in mind, what I've done is I've gone into uh, Azure. I've created a DNS zone because Azure supports DNS zones. I've created a zone uh, for this domain in Office 365. And then using PowerShell, what I've done is I've already gone and created all the accounts, verified the uh, domain and uh, Office 365 knows that it is correctly configured. So all the domain records have basically been set up here again thanks to the scripting I've done in PowerShell and then basically I use the uh, redirection here and I point to the the Azure domain servers which the Azure name servers which I've done here. All right so what I want to do now is I want to do the DKIM but I want to do it with PowerShell. So what I'm going to do here is make sure that I firstly have my Azure PowerShell modules loaded and secondly that I have my Exchange Online PowerShell modules loaded. Now once I've got that I can basically run this command here. So this command here is going to get the sign-in config for the domain. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to show us that, again, the domain is kumoalliance.net.au and it's currently set to being false. So it's DKIM is not enabled. So now what I want to do is, now that I've got that, I want to go out and create uh, my two selectors here, right? So I'm going to create my CNAME records, right? So if I look at... Um, CNAME 1 and 2 here, or just look at one of these, you'll see that this is the name record I need to use. So I'm going to have to create a CNAME record that is in this format. Select the one dash domain underscore domain key and so on. So all of this is in the details from the Microsoft article on how to do DKIM. So I've got to do that for two selectors and then basically what I need to do is create two host names. All right, so again, that's pretty easy. That's just a, uh, again, a uh, record here, a variable. So if I now clear the screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Azure commands now to go in here and basically set the DNS record. 
Okay, and with all the details there, you'll see that I'm setting a C name, I'm setting it for the domain, I've already got a resource group, and then here it's going to add that uh, information in for me. So let me go in and run that. So that will create my first uh, C name for DKIM. You'll see here, and then I'm gonna go and run the second one here, and that will create the uh, record for my second record. Now before I go and enable it for the domain, let me go and uh, basically have a look. So let me refresh my zone here in Azure. And again, we scroll down here, you'll see here are the two uh, records that I've just added. So select a one, all right, and you'll see it's added the name correctly, C name, and there's the alias that's required for my DKIM. So that's all good to go. Now what I need to do now is go back in and run this command here, which will basically enable DKIM for me. So I just run that. So that has now run successfully. I've got no errors. The indication is that it has been enabled for us. The way that we can check is obviously, again, with PowerShell. But let's go back into the uh, console here. Let's refresh our domains. Let's have a look at kumoalliance.net.au and you'll see now that uh, DKIM has been enabled and we now have that protection. So what does this sort of look like in the back end? So uh, what happens when we get a message that has DKIM? So let me go through here and just locate a message I know that has uh, DKIM uh, basically in it. And then what we can do here is that we can show you. So what I've got here is I've picked picked an email that I know has DKIM on it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have a look at this with the free message header analyzer from Microsoft. All right, so we'll let that spin up and have a look at the email. And then what I'm gonna do is select the option for other. All right, so we look in the authentication results here, you'll basically see that the DKIM option here has been sit down, uh, set as pass. So that means that my receiving um, server, the uh, one that I've received it on, has verified that it is a valid domain, uh, valid email from that domain. And then if I go down here, you'll actually see the DKIM signature, all right? And you'll actually see the codes and the signatures in there. So again, if I click on that, it will take me to uh, the information, give me more information, again, about how the uh, DKIM actually uh, operates. Now, what you want to do to get uh, information, more information about how to do this and what the records uh, exactly need to look like is I'd recommend you go out and have a look at this article. Uh, basically use DKIM to validate, validate outbound email sent from your custom domain. And in essence, the CNAME records that you need to use are basically down the bottom here. And as the example here, so it will show you exactly the, the CNAMEs you need based on uh, the tenant name and your custom domain. So that's basically what I've done here um, using PowerShell, makes it much easier. And one of the big advantages is, is because I'm hosting uh, the zone, the DNS zone in Azure, I can use uh, PowerShell to do all that configuration for me. And as you see, here's the selector keys that I was able to add programmatically. So in essence, very much recommended that you set up DKIM Again, it will then make sure that people aren't uh, spoofing your domain and it will provide you an additional layer of uh, protection. Easy to set up, just need some domain records and then to enable in Office 365, you can do that through the web interface, but the preferred option to do that is to use PowerShell.